Hello and welcome to the last episode of UMass Sports Weekly before you all get to escape this wonderful weather and hopefully go on vacation for spring break. But for now, let's take a look at what you'll be seeing on tonight's show. We'll recap the Minute Woman's exciting season with the top five plays of the year. Our experts will debate in our last hockey segment in a buyer's cell. And then we'll take a look at the UMass basketball team's last home game of the season. Stay tuned for all this and more. This is UMass Sports Weekly. This is UMass Sports Weekly. men's basketball team took on Atlantic 10 opponent Richmond for senior night at the Mullen Center on Wednesday. Big man Caddy Lane and forward Max Yesha were honored as the two graduating seniors prior to the game. Our own Tim Dennehy has the coverage. The Minutemen recognized their two seniors this past Wednesday at senior night Maxi Esho and Caddy Lane both scoring over 1,000 points, and as a class has the most wins since the 1996 UMass Minutemen Final Four run. From start to finish, the Minutemen struggled to contain this crafty Richmond team. Trey Davis tried to swing momentum as he dissed it to Cattle Lane and puts it in, bring the Minutemen down by two, the closest the Minutemen would become in this game to attaining the lead. And with six minutes to go, Richmond's Terry Allen puts the dagger in the heart of the Minutemen with this emphatic dunk. And Richmond would hold on to win this one 56 to 53. And we're back for tonight's debate segment with our hockey experts, and that's Mark John Louis and Tim Dennehy. What's going on, guys? How are you? How you doing? Doing all right, Chris. How are you doing today? All right, so we're going to start out with our first question, and that's the game coming up, and that's the game against LaSalle. Mark? Can UMass beat LaSalle on Thursday? Let's, let's see what you got to say. Uh, no, they're not going to beat you, LaSalle, on Thursday because w the way I see it right now is right now um, UMass has already faced uh, LaSalle twice. And even though they've already won the first two games, it's usually that third game around in which, you know, the team sometimes struggles to beat them a third time in a row. It is so hard sometimes just to beat a team three times in a row in, in, in uh, college basketball. And right now, I'm really just not convinced of the fact that UMass can, is capable of doing anything on offense. Yes, I kind of understand that both offenses suck right about now. But, you know, at least LaSalle has a consistent score they can turn to. UMass does not. So I'm going to say, no, they lose. No, they, they emph I emphatically believe UMass will win this game. How? Ap because, I mean, let's just look at the numbers. As Mac Miller once said, people lie, numbers won't. <laughs> oh! <laughs> the first time these two met... Four of the Explorers had over 10 points, and UMass still came out on top. The second time they met, Jordan Price had 30 points, and UMass is still coming out on top. This team has seen this team's best. We beat their best, and we're going to continue to do it this coming week. Have you seen what UMass has done recently? You went to the last two games. Well, you went to the last game against Richmond, right? How many points did they score in that game? They, they did not score enough to win. That and have a good that'll be it for this segment. For this question, mind me, I'm going with Mark on this one. His argument was stronger. He brought up the last game against Richmond. I don't like UMass's chances, and Mark poses the strongest argument for that question. So now, the second question. Who has to be the impact player for UMass to win this game? We're going to start that minute clock off, and Tim, you go first. It has to be Max Yesho. Max, he's a senior. It's tournament time. The team looks to their seniors to step up. He needs to step up, and let's just look at how they did without Max Yesho against URI. He played on about, because of foul trouble, he played about 16 minutes. And the team was paralyzed. It was absolutely nothing. He needs to step up. He needs to be the impact player. If they don't have an, if Max Yesu is not that impact player, there is going to be no impact player because they're going down. They're not going to win. You yeah, can well. enjoy, so you can try and enjoy Max Yesu all you want, but you're not going to get Max Yesu if you don't start Trey Davis at the point guard. And he, even though he is going to start a point guard, he needs to have a good game if UMass wants a chance to win this game. Because you know, college basketball, a lot of times, you know, you know, with point guards in college basketball, it's oftentimes a lot like the quarterback in the NFL. You know, if, you're, if your point guard's not having a good game, then, you know, the rest of the offense sometimes seems to struggle. I mean, just look at Trey Davis' last couple games. Against GW, he only had four points in that game, and he only played 19 minutes in that game. At this point, and I can't even consider Trey Davis a point guard. It, it, so I think your, your response is invalid. Exactly. That's Trey it. Davis that's it. I'm cutting you guys off right there. 
From what we've seen this year, Trey Davis has not been consistent. He has not been the guy to go to in big spots. So I'm sorry, Mark, Tim, you Fair got enough. this one. Fair. The stable player in there is Max Yeso. Just because of how stable he's been over the past couple of seasons, I think that's the stronger argument right there. So now we go into the game, back into the game against LaSalle as a team. 59 points for UMass. We're going to go under or over, and I'm starting with you, Mark. Let's roll the clock. Go ahead. I would love to believe that this UMass team could score over 59 points a game, but, you know, just from what I've you're seen... Down, you're a Debbie that, Downer. Yes, What's I'm a huge on? Debbie Downer. You see, <laughs> I was watching that game against George W. It, I, I thought the game against Fordham was... Not Fordham. The game against uh, Richmond was the worst game I've ever seen. I stand corrected. The first half in that game against George Washington on the road was by far the worst game I had ever <laughs> seen from this UMass basketball team. And right now, they're really, starting to, they're really starting to tell me, can this team even score 59 points in a game? And, you know, when you're going up against LaSalle, which is one of the better defensive teams in our conference, I have to say, you know, maybe they can break 59. They'll beat, they'll, they'll make it 259 maybe, but, you know, not much over than that. Go ahead, Tim. We'll give you a couple extra seconds. Go ahead. This is tournament time. They're going to score over 59 points. They've had over five days of rest. This UMass running gun offense, having five days of rest, they're going to score over 59. That's absolutely without a question. I mean, LaSalle's scouting report on this game is that UMass is down. UMass has something to prove during this game. Both teams are going to come out firing. You can throw the stats away. This is tournament time. UMass is going over If 59. tournament time meant anything for UMass, they wouldn't have gone from first to eighth in the standings over the past two weeks. Yep, that was five days ago. This is tournament time. Okay, and with that being said, first to eighth in the last two weeks is the strongest argument that I heard in that little debacle that just happened right there. So, Mark... You're crowned the winner of our debate segment. Congratulations. You were also the last to throw the paper, so I'll give you credit on that. Thank as well. you. Give me an extra point for that. I win that one three to one. All right. Thank you, guys. You both posed strong arguments throughout the segment, Thank and you. I appreciate you guys coming up. And uh, we'll look to see if they can compete in this A-10 tournament we got coming up. I sure hope they can, at least. I'll hope they can. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll be right back with our buy or sell hockey segment. Stay tuned. Hey UMass fans, this is Brittany Collins of UMass Sports Weekly giving you this week's minimum schedule. To start things off tomorrow, women's lacrosse plays at Yale University for a 4 p.m. start time. Thursday, men's basketball hosts number 9 in the A-10 conference, LaSalle University at the Mullen Center at 12 p.m. If UMass wins, come support men's basketball back-to-back -back days as they play in the A-10 quarterfinals at 12 p.m. on Friday. Also on Friday, softball has a doubleheader taking on Rutgers at 1.45 p.m., followed by Chattanooga at 4.15 p.m. To close out Friday's Madness, men's and women's track and field start day one of the NCAA championship. Good luck to track and field. Saturday, March 14th, is day two of track and field NCAA championships. Both baseball and softball have doubleheaders with baseball playing Army twice and softball taking on Canisius and Iowa State. Go support men's lacrosse as they host Penn State at McGurk Stadium at 12 p.m. To close out the weekend, baseball will take on Army twice more in Tampa Bay while softball plays LIU on their last day in Clearwater, Florida. And a week from today, baseball will play Harvard University as women's tennis heads to Charleston, South Carolina to take on Samford for a 10 a.m. start time. I'm Brittany Collins and this is UMass Sports Weekly.